Welcome back, everybody. Yep, it's Rudy. Yep, we're dimming it. We're making it darker. This is pretty much a sentimental closure video for me and many other people out there. I just want you all to know, if you haven't heard the news, I'm a little late to the party. Prima Video Games, better known as Brady Games, which they merged together a couple years ago. In other words, the company who made the video game strategy guide for like the last 30 years. It's done. It's over. And I know, I know, a lot of you are going to say, Rudy, come on. It's long overdue. Did you really think a company's going to make books for young people to play video games? And young people are going to buy into these things? I mean, I understand that. But this represents a very large piece of the video game, nerd, geek, whatever word you want to use, the culture from the early 90s all the way to, well, to kind of like the mid-2000s, kind of when it started dying off. So, to me... And many other people out there, these books were very sentimental. These were, I mean, I collected them. I mean, I keep them all nice and neat. I made sure I bought them all for all my favorite games. No, I, I don't think they're investable. I don't think they're going to go up in value. Um, another reason I want to make this video now is because on the news of this last week, I had a lot of patrons and other individuals out there who were from the video game world contacting me saying, Rudy, do you think these Prima Brady game type strategy guides are going to become investable relics now that the company is gone. There's going to be no more this and that. And, you know, I thought about it, and I'm going to give you guys an honest answer. No. These are not investable. Investing in video game strategy guides is not a thing. Now, I'll be honest. I'm kind of surprised no one's tried grading. You know, everything nowadays is about grading. Aren't you kind of surprised no one's tried to grade strategy guides at this point and try to seal them in, like, a comic book? I'm surprised we really haven't gotten there yet. But maybe that's just me. <laughs> So like I said, for me, this represented a lot. And again, we all knew this day was coming. I mean, come on, let's think about this, everybody. You know, Prima and Brady Games, all these companies were struggling. You know, in the 90s, we had the, the Game Facts, FAQs, was it? Facts? I called it Facts. And, um, you know, people started reading these huge text files online for strategy guides for Zeldas and Final Fantasies and many other games out there. And as time went by, you know, the video game strategy guide industry started to struggle. Probably my favorite strategy guide ever. I, I literally lugged this around in middle school. Like, I kept it with me and, like, studied the thing. Like, in between classes, in the classroom, and, like, would hide it in my history book. Like, seriously, that's how big of a deal. And, again, this is Final Fantasy Tactics. If you don't know what this is, this is quite arguably the best style. That, anyways, in a different video. So, I, I, you know, it's long overdue. A lot of people said that this industry should have died many years ago. And maybe they're right, you know, I mean, maybe they're right. And some people say, well, Rudy, you know, a lot of these Prima books were terrible. Some of them were rushed out garbage. Other of these books were really good. I mean, some of these books were beautifully designed. The artwork and the details of the way they would do it were just gorgeous. And the way they would have the stats and data and all the extra, just the polishing of the book was very well done. And then many other books were kind of rushed and sloppy. So, you know, like for example... This is quite arguably one of the most historic ones, at least for me and a lot of other people. Secret of Mana, or Secret of Mana, depending on what you called it, um, was the game that really hooked it for me on the Super Nintendo when it came to that action strategy, role-playing, whatever you want to call it. But again, one of my biggest things I hated was they just made, like, they like really? Black and white? Really? Like, come on, really? And then they just had, like, certain areas in the book that had color. Like, some of it, you could tell there were some things that were just kind of like, really? And, you know, as the years went by, we all knew there wasn't really a place in the future for these kind of things. These things were just not going to be around in the future. There really was no market for this. Young people and millennials and people, I hate using the term millennials because I feel like it's such a negative slang term in 2018. But again, you know, I don't see today's youth who are playing games and Fortnite and Minecraft they're not going to buy nice books like this. They don't care about that. You know, old guys like me, this is like a big deal. I mean, this is this is the stuff to me. This was an extension of the game. It was an extension of me. Like, I remember a lot of kids and nerds like me in, in middle school, we would bring these to school during the lunch break between classes or recess. I mean, this was stuff we talked about and strategized. So when we got home, we would play the games and be into it. And come on. With the internet and smartphones and the way things are, people just aren't going to take to these books in the future. And I think we all know that. It just, it was, 
it's just a sad day to see this whole chunk of the culture is going to end. So that's the first part of this video. The second part, I want to focus on some people who contacted me from the retro video game world and different industries. And they were asking me about, Rudy, what do you, th is first the question was, did you think there was a way for the industry to evolve and make it? Honestly, no. Now again, for those of you who weren't aware, um, this was the first strategy guide that I remember years ago when they started to try to blend the paper strategy guys together with the online thing to try to help the sales. Because this was Final Fantasy IX, this particular book when I bought it was the first time I noticed that they wanted me to use online stuff. But I was confused because I paid, I paid the full price, the full $12.99 for the book, but I didn't expect to have to use the internet or computer also in addition to that. And I don't know what year that this was, uh, this was 2000, to give you an idea. So 18 years ago. So I specifically remember that. But I remember being very confused, but I was too young to understand that they were doing that because they were concerned about the direction of the paper strategy guide world with the emergence of digital. Again, this was still pre-smartphones. This is only 2000, everybody. I was in high school. Most of you guys watching this, I don't know how old everybody is, but again, whole different era, everybody. So when I look at that, I remember being very confused by it. But again, I still bought all my favorite books for every single favorite game. I don't even, most of you watching may not even know what this stuff is. If you do, send me, put a comment below and be like, Rudy, oh my God, I remember that. This was my favorite game. By the way, this was a fighting game. This was like a Street Fighter Mortal Kombat, but with like Final Fantasy and different characters from different games. In addition, there was like this ridiculous role-playing dungeon crawler, like adventure mode. It was weird as hell. And again, there was these weird games like this that, Besides me, I didn't know anybody who even bought these games or the books and really appreciated it besides me. And maybe it was just me. I'm located in Florida. Maybe it's demographics. I don't know. But again, this was something that, you know, I just look back on and it means a lot to me. So final segment of the video, I want to comment, Rudy, what do you think? Why do you not believe these are investable? Now that we know the company who made them is gone, Brady Games, Prima, they're gone. Everything's gone. There's no more. That, you know, they're not going to reprint the old ones. It's over with. I mean, I guess a new company could buy the rights or do something. Maybe. I guess. I don't know. But now that it's over with, do you honestly think there's no potential for someone to come in with, like, the world of strategy guides to really do anything? How about this, everybody? Huh? Anybody? Yeah. This was super hard for me to get 10, 20 years ago. So, no, I just, there's no way to justify. For those of you out there who want to buy into these or find nice mint ones like these... At the end of the day, you can do that and buy them and enjoy it, but don't justify it as an investment. Don't try to slant it or justify spending money or buying multiple copies as an investment for this type of item. Because unfortunately, I just, you know, I know my life revolves around greedy scumbag money things and all that and the financial this and that and Magic the Gathering, but there's no way for me to justify investing in a strategy guide. This is something strictly you buy and put money into because it's important to you. You have an emotional, nostalgic connection. And that's really it. Because there's no way for future generations. And again, this can be applied to many things. People tell me that all the time with Magic the Gathering and the old cards. I don't see anybody connecting with a video game strategy guide in the future. It's not like there's a limited print run like a, an original Magic card or Pokemon card or Yu-Gi-Oh card. I just don't see it when it comes to, well... Strategy guides on just books that were... I mean, again, a lot of these things were very, very polished. I mean, the way they did the enemies, the stats, the data, the artwork involved of it. It's very good. I'm not going to lie. But unfortunately, it just isn't. I can't give any positive facts on why I actually think these are going to go up in value in the future or become investable. Now, again, I had a few people say to me, Rudy, what do you think about if uh, the comic book industry... And the other industries start grading strategy guys. No. No. So I hope you guys learned something today. That was my point. I just wanted to share, let everybody know. To me, it's kind of a closure personal video. And it just, I know I'm a little late to the party and discussing this last week with everybody else. But I just, you know, I finally got around to getting this video published publicly. It's probably made a few days before by the time you guys see it. And I just really, I don't know. It's emotional for me and it really does hit me that another piece of the old 90s style era books and culture is just gone. It's just, it's not coming back. That is it, everybody. If you guys agree, tell me what you think. Do you guys, I'm sure everybody has stories out there. Right?